going on, everyone? It's Christina from the Glazer Tutoring Company, and today we are going to find the greatest common factor, right? Greatest common factor for lovely polynomials. And here we got a polynomial. 6y to the 4th minus 2y to the 3rd plus 3y to the 2nd minus y. We got four, uh, you know, terms here, right? They're all different because they all have different number of y's. Okay. Now, greatest common factor, usually known as the GCF, right? Greatest common factor. And a greatest common factor is always the biggest, right? Greatest, a.k.a. biggest. And something in common, right? The something in common is either going to be numbers or letters that can be divisible or we'll say can be divided by each term. Okay. Now, when we're talking about a GCF, we can only go as high as the lowest possible numbers and variables that are seen in your polynomial. So when you're finding out your GCF, you should always start with the lowest number and the lowest variable that's found in your polynomial. So start with numbers, right? Do them independently. So maybe we'll start with the numbers first and then we'll move on to the letters, AKA the variables. So here's my polynomial. I have a six, I have a two, and just know with greatest common factors, greatest common factors are 99% of the time, they're always gonna be positive. So don't even worry about the signs. If some of them are minus, some of them are plus, just focus on the numbers. So we have a six, we got a two, we have a three, and huh, there's no number in front of this Y, but what number would that be? Did you say a one? You would be absolutely correct. Keep in mind, once again, don't worry about the negative, right? And remember, your greatest common factor is either going to be coming from the lowest number that is given. So 6, 2, 3, and 1, hmm, I got to start with 1. And when you're finding out greatest common factors, you think of two values to multiply to get to that value. But, I mean, I got 1. So as far as, you know, whole numbers go, I can only say 1 times 1. There's no other multiple that I can multiply by to get to one. So I don't even have to do these other ones, right? The lowest number possible is going to be one. So one to kickstart it off. Now, do we have to write the one down? Absolutely not. But let's keep going. Now let's move on with the letters, AKA the variables. And remember, always start with the lowest ones. So in this case, we have y to the fourth. That means you got four y's. y to the third. That means you got three y's. y to the second. That means you got two y's. And now y, right? This would be y raised to the first, meaning that I only have one y. So out of all of these variables, which one is the lowest one? This one. And how many y's do you have? I only got one y. And they all have y's, but you can only pick the lowest one that they all have in common. Since you only got one y here, that's the only one that's going to be in common between all of these, right? Each one of these at least have one y. So it would just be y to the first. Keep in mind, you don't have to write y to the first. Um, and you don't even have to write the y, the one, right? You could just say y. And for this one, that would be the greatest common factor. You're only talking about one Y value being the greatest common factor for this. And you're done. That's it. Hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for the support. And for coming back and viewing the videos. We got chem videos, physics videos, math videos on the channel. More topics coming your way. So thank you so, so much. And I hope you're having a great day out there. All right? Keep studying hard. I'm always rooting for you. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.